Lib Unwind is, uh, how, how do I look? Hold on a second. I gotta fix the camera. Hey, where did I go? There's something. Oh, the, oh this is, uh, okay. Okay, so uh, This is talking about the ELF file format, a just-in-time compiler, and uh, I don't know what their objective is. I think they want to debug with symbolic information. Uh, so. They probably expect me to none of this stuff is relevant. <laughs> um, they they throw these uh, standards at me and I say that has nothing to do with my operating system. It's kind of a shock. You'd be surprised how many people tell me this is how it's done. And then I say, no, that's not how it's done. <laughs> uh, like um, my calling convention, um, they say the x86-64 uses registers for the calling convention. I say mine doesn't anyway um, sometimes it's like a weird Jedi mind trick it's like these are not the droids you're looking for yeah they are <laughs> the x86 has register calling convention mine doesn't okay so uh, we want to talk about uh, okay, basically, um, when you, uh, when you boot, you have a task, you say who, that's all the symbols in, you inherit your, your parent task symbols, so if you say task rep, the indentation means it's a child. So Adam is the parent of all t tasks. <coughs> and um, all these symbols you see are in Adam's table. And uh, that happens during boot. He compiles and puts stuff in his symbol table. It's You can kind of think of these like environment variables, except they're, they're functions and variables and defines. Um, but the scope is like an environment variable. Anyway, so Adam has all those symbols. Each task has a symbol table. So, uh, basically, that's where we look to get the uh, debug information. Um, so, for example, if we make a, uh, let's make a function.
Oh, I screwed up. Oh well. I should have said in. I should have said in, but oh well. Okay, so let's go through all the. Okay, count. Count to ten. Whoops. So if we say who minus r for no recursion, that means don't do Adam. Uh, I don't know why it's. I don't even know if that's called recursion. It's inheritance, I guess. Maybe I should. Oh well. It seemed like recursion to me at the time. So we have a, a function in the symbol table. We have a function count, and we have a function. Do it once. Uh, my bird. for my bird to shut up. So I have a hash table, and what I did is, uh, this, this hash table is, uh, it's an array of linked, it's an array of linked, linked lists. This, this hash table is an array of linked lists. Some people do the... Silly, the silly hash table where you uh, where you move it into a slot below if it has a collision. Anyway, uh, so this is an array. The, this is an array of linked lists, and uh, I have multiple. I have multiple. God, that bird. Just hold on a couple more, a couple more seconds. He'll shut up. Okay. So, so uh, so so I I put I put multiple types of entries into my hash table, um, and. Uh, you know, I could just have a single number to tell what type, but instead I do a bit mask. And uh, what that enables me to do is uh, when I'm compiling in the compiler, maybe there's a situation where you're looking for a, 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 a type of a variable like a class maybe it could be a class or an internal type and maybe you want either of those and so what you do is when you search for a hash entry if you hit F1 under the hash the hash table documentation is pretty good okay so this is showing uh, you have an array of linked lists and you can have collisions so we 
find a string in a hash table. Now this has a type mask. Um, find hash entries, hash table, mask. This is the type mask. So you can search for multiple types. Now the, the way this works is uh, newer entries overshadow older entries. So for example, if I make, uh, let's say u0 count i64 in i64 i for i equals zero i less than for i equals one semicolon i less or equal in i plus plus and then let's say uh okay i, I should do you know you never want to lose an opportunity when you're doing demos don't do something stupid but I can't think of anything so um, if we say count to 10 so uh, so this overshadows the old one if we say who minus R the old one is still in the table it's a linked list and it's stacked if you're familiar with how stacks work a linked list stack it's a very natural easy thing to do no I don't even think it is stacked I think it's a queue is it a queue I think it's a queue it used to be a stack I think I turned everything into a queue a double a linked list sort I can't believe I don't remember anyway so uh, so where were we so we have a bunch of different types <clears throat> the ones for debugging are function function is the main one we are interested in so we want to look at the hash entry for a function um, so it's hash function this has a return class um, I am able I am able to uh, to specify a type with a, a single pointer um, almost uh, if it's a class there's a class structure if it's an internal type that's a class structure uh, if well, anyway, um, okay, I guess I have to explain this. That's the whole pro point. Okay, so let's talk about how the compiler deals with types. That's before we can talk about the, the function. We need to talk about how the compiler deals with types. Uh, I don't think I put it here. Yeah, I did. Okay, good. So, when you declare a class, it creates, it calls class new, and what this does is it creates, we have max pointer stars. This is a fixed, this is a fixed value. The most pointer stars you can have is four maybe you don't think it's good to have a limit um, screw yourself I don't care I don't even I don't it's possible you might not even it might crash badly I think I check anyway uh, I don't have patience for ridiculous anyway so what do we do here we allocate this is class new so we clear alloc and look at what we have here we have hash class times pointer stars so what we're doing here is we're making a uh, we're making a structure that's repeated about four times uh, anyway uh, 
and uh, I'm just I'm trying to outline what it looks like so uh, the interesting thing is there's a uh, pointer star count so here's the deal um, when you have a one star um, if you have zero stars okay so we have so we have a structure okay and if you have one star you point here if you have two stars you point here if you have three stars you point here and if you ever want to go to your base without stars then you subtract the the star count and that gets you back to the base so with with a single hash class pointer the hash class pointer points to one of these entries and it's it it encodes it encodes the uh, number of pointer stars so that's how we do types so um, for uh, for for a function we have a hash class pointer to a return type now this can't be an array uh, no, that's not too surprised. That's okay because we're not doing C++. Um, so this is a... Now this is either an internal or a regular one. Let's look at what a class... A class has a member list and... Uh, I still don't remember if these are stacks or if they're single or doubly linked. I can't remember. Uh, that's weird. But I I changed them from single to double sometimes. No, they're single. They're single. It's a stack. It's a the, it's a it's a linked list stack. Anyway, uh, so for uh, um, this is a class pointer it has a list of members so what does this mean let's review what we're dealing with here so what this means is um, if I create a, uh, a class uh, student u8 name 32 i64 age now if I say who minus r, there's a student class in this in the uh, so what we can do is we can say c hash class star temp e, temp temp c. I don't know. I like to use standard uh, names. Anyway, so we say hash find what are the parameters needle haystack mask instance needle is a student haystack is fs hash table mask is htt class instance we'll leave it as number the first one you encounter we if we had an overshadowed one we could get an older one but I, I never do that so let's see if we got a value now I'm going to be uh, you might call it recursive <laughs> uh, that's a bad joke So I have a uh, command line command that dumps a pointer. What it does is it looks up the class. So it's pretty funny because I'm looking up the class of a class. Um, <laughs> anyway, it's, it's kind of funny. 
So when we looked at the definition, you saw it inherited, it inherits the next and all, all, all hash entries have a next. This one is a zero, so this is the end of the line. It has a string, a string pointer, that's, and it's holding student. That's the hash string. If you want to know how I hash, I shift and add. And anyway, I don't know, it seems to work. Type, remember we talked about uh, a type mask. So this should be HTT class. Use count, every time it gets looked up, it increments that. So when we're making, a, when we're compiling a function, if a variable does not get used, it's easy to generate a warning. Um, source link. Okay, so this links back to the source code. And in our case, it was the command line. So it gives us a temporary file. This is something that will... Uh, uh it's it's bogus it's bogus but it's it's not gonna crash anyway i just changed my i just abbreviated index anyway inside joke so index what is that anyway this is uh oh this is what we're want this is what we want to talk about so for uh for functions Okay, this this is the help index. When you press F1, uh, it automatically compiles a help. Um, so if we look up graphics, this is scanning the uh, symbol table and automatically compiling this help report. And like in this case, there's a class. So uh the index is the help index apparently we had it set to nothing debug information this tells the uh the line number of different addresses uh i have to think about it a second we'll get to that import name uh i don't remember why is this part of every class Okay, so this is a source. All, all, if it comes from the source code, it's a source symbol. I don't, I don't know if that makes any sense. <clears throat> it's just a common inheritance base class. I'm not real good with uh, C++ terminology. I just make shit up. <laughs> It's kind of funny. A lot of people will tell me my code is wrong. I go, I made the fucking compiler. It's not wrong. So, um, uh, there's a, I, I, I should, I should, if there's, I shouldn't be obnoxious for no reason. So if I have incorrect terminology, I should probably change it. And if I have incorrect syntax, A lot of times it's really easy to fix it. I wasn't real careful. I just said, fuck it. I said, what do I need the compiler to do? And then I did it. And then I... <laughs> I didn't go investigate what the standard was. So anyway. Raw type. Okay, so... Um, in the hash table, each fun each task has a symbol table, and you yourself can use hash find, and you pass it the hash table. Now, if you want Adam's table, I think the this will recur, uh, this will recurse. So, in other words, if it doesn't find it, it's going to search Adam. Um, the reason I know that is because there's one that will not recurse, I do believe. 
hash single table find. This will not re I don't know if recurse is the right word. Damn it. I probably fucked it up. I gotta go fix everything. It searches the parents. Uh, is that a recursion? Maybe traverse. How about that? Um, when you're going down a, a tree, that seems like recursion. When you're going up a tree, it doesn't seem like it's recursion. Oh, well. I didn't... <laughs> I learned assembly language. I didn't learn the other shit. So, uh, um, so you can find the, uh, the, the symbols in the hash table. And, uh, and then you can go through the member list. So we found student. Now here's the member list, uh, member list root. I do believe this is gonna report the first member. When you call this class rep, are you paying attention? Class rep will display a pointer and you can tell it how deep, how deep to uh, follow. I think we can say three. Don't do that, okay. Oh well, fuck it. So, uh, uh, so if you want to see how to uh, how how to how to interpret the uh, the data structure f from the compiler, look at the class rep. Uh, this traverses a, the data structure for a class. If you want to look at a function, uh, I guess you can look at fun rep. It, it finds it in the hash table. And uh, the interesting thing here is it has a, it unassembles um, somewhere. It reports the registers and it unassembles. Where does it unassemble? Update reg var image. Okay, this is for uh, at one time I made a, a IDE and I had a watch window with the local variables. I think this code is left over from when I had that. I copied the registers into this there's a spot on the stack for each variable. When you have a register variable, it, it, it still has a spot on the stack. And when you, uh, when it was doing the watching, this would copy from the register to, where's the unassemble? Damn it. What the truck? Class rep. What that does do that fun if I say fun rep print. Oh, it doesn't unassemble. It only reports the uh now a function is a lot like a class. It has uh if you think about it, when you make a class, when you make a class, you have, uh, you do stuff like this. When you make a function, okay, the return is different, but look here. Um, you have, you have arguments here. And then you have more you have more symbols here, and so uh, what my compiler does is uh, 
the a class and a function have member list member lists this this has a the arguments are the first couple in the list, and then it. The local variable local variables are member members. So uh, the only other, let's see. Oh, let's do unassemble function. Let's go to here. Unassemble function. This. Uh, so you see what this does. It, uh, it, it finds a hash, then it calls unassemble, shut up, god damn that bird, So uh, there's a uh, there's a there's a there's a debug information min min max and then a uh, variable size array. There's a variable size array. This is uh, this is for the address. I don't remember if it's this is line number. Uh, addresses the addresses of different line numbers and I think it's zero if there's no, no uh, bytes on that line so for example let's say uh, in the editor we are looking at line 255 so for this function it would be a, you would have an array of like 15 and then it would have the address of each line and if there's no symbol I think it has a zero so that's what the debug is and when we call this unassemble function it uh, it's it does a fun rep it reports it reports the uh, the arguments and local variables and then it does an unassemble and it it is or it is it has the exact dimensions of the code the it got the uh, it, it looked at the first and last uh, the min and the max tell so if we had a function it would be from 255 to, two, to 269 and uh, so this 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 calculates the size and it when it calls unassemble number this is number of bytes and it goes ahead and prints the code size now it actually is searching for either a function or an export sys symbol. Basically, assemb assembly code, uh, or that's not true. Uh, if you have a function that's that doesn't have a header, it has a symbol. But if you don't have a header, you just have a symbol. If you don't have a header, you just have a symbol. Um, so. Uh, if it's just a symbol, then it just does a uh, just does a get. It just does an unassemble. So in the if you have a well anyway. So in the kernel, we have headers for. I made a header for almost everything. Everything uh, for that for that reason, pretty much. Um, even the stuff that you have no business messing with I made private headers and stuff public means that it's listed on the help report public means it's listed on the help report I did some private ones uh, I don't remember I don't I don't think I did everything which is kind of 
inconsistent. Oh well. Anyway, uh, so uh, it has some private. So uh, let's go look at the web page and see what the comments are saying. Uh, let's go look at the web page and see what the comments are saying. Uh, let's go look at the web page and see what the comments are saying. Okay. Okay, that's it.